600 years ago, they say, the Maoris came in huge canoes across the Pacific from Hawaii. They brought their Maori tanga, a language, a culture, a way of life. Tribes grew, and for each, a marae, a meeting place. Generations passed, and the marae became more sacred. Marae, heart of the tribe, courtyard for celebration and mourning, welcome and farewell. A forum where grievances were heard, disputes settled. Then the European, the Pakia, came. There was a new god. The mana of the chiefs was eroded and old ways were forgotten. Today, three quarters of the Maori population lives in the city. Urban marae, a traditional form adapted for survival. The new marae of the urban drifters. Architect design, building code abiding, fundraised and government assisted, with multiracial local population as tribe. A meeting house to accommodate visitors, a courtyard to welcome them. A city place for the Maori, for Maori tanga, for any person, Maori style. A few miles from the capital in Wainua Mata, such a project has begun. Maoris, Pacific Islanders, Europeans share an economic level and are capitalizing on their isolation to make a new community. Day one, fundraising started, protocol emerging, tradition honored. Some of us got together and we discussed the need for a morai for Maori people in Wainuiomata. And so we talked a bit and decided to, decided on a philosophy, which was this. Our waka, our canoe, was kotaitanga, one people. The anchor of that canoe, te pungota waka, was tatua, God, our spiritual strength, and our paddle, of that canoe was going to be goodwill and love, something very sacred to the Maori people. And so we have come along through the waters with our canoe, but then we started to see other things on the horizon. We started to see other people in Wainuiomata. We started to see other cultures, other arts and crafts, and we weren't too sure what was beyond that horizon and we're still not sure. So in recent months, we were fortunate to be given the vision to decide that Wainuiomata needed a marae for all the people. And if you look here today, below you or next to you, you'll see a child. That's, that's our child, Pākehā Māori. And that's what we want the marae for. Where the many art forms in our community that we saw on this horizon, the pottery you'll see in here, the spinners. We can do it, because we're standing here today, right now. A whole lot of us. <laughs> Auckland, with the world's largest Polynesian population and over a dozen urban marae projects. In the suburbs of the Western Districts, a project nurtured for 10 years has emerged as the John Waititi Memorial Marae. Open to all, but a Maori place, where the Maori can be on his own ground in a Pakia world in the city. All our activities are here, and our children are being raised here. And I think, in, in actual fact, there's no very little physical connection with home for a lot of our folk, and especially with the children. Keep still. Feed. You take Te Aratu here, where if you travel up any of these roads here, you'll see that the uh, allocation of the houses, you'll have 
Pākehā, Samoan, Māori, Pākehā, Rarotongan, Pākehā, Māori. And we were all sort of at the same income level, roughly, you know. Uh, mostly working class folks, all living much the same way of life and uh, experiencing the same difficulties in making ends meet in the city. The culture group that's around here and various other groups have made the people get a sort of West Auckland identity, if you like. Most of them, especially the Māori ones, know that we are working for a Māori. This marae differs from the real traditional rural marais in the sense that one, the land is uh, not so-called tribal land, and two, it, it isn't a tribal. The area we have given by the council is excellent. It's about five acres, and we cleared the bush, and we hope to plant native trees. What is happening now with the expansion of places like Auckland is that it's the city kid who's missing out and not getting into these. So it's up to us to, to take care of our own people, our own kids. the old rural Auraki Marae of the Nati Whatua tribe is adapting radically to an urban environment. Once the Tangata Whenua, the dominant tribe of the area, then victims of a tidy waterfront campaign, they were moved years ago from their ancestral marae by the sea to state-owned houses on a nearby hill. The move caused much sadness, but a turning point was passed. A new marae needed a new concept and a broader function the marae role in an urban setting. First an education centre, arts and crafts school, classes in Māori tanga. These flourished and a $650,000 complex was planned, a Māori community and cultural centre for all races of Auckland. The ceremony on the old marae, the Oraki domain, a kind of public exorcism to clear the air and formally set things right. The theme is thanksgiving for those who lived here in the past and the life and culture they handed on. To symbolize the link between the old and the new, earth from the old marae is taken to be blessed in a church service. The soil is then taken in procession to the new marae, where the visitors are challenged and welcomed by the tribe in the traditional manner.
As part of the dedication service, the earth is scattered on the new marae, completing the ceremony and providing a starting point for the new Oraki venture. Te Kahui Rangatahi, a Māori club, off to the country. We have got together for mainly for the purpose of doing a little Māori culture, what, what we can, in a short space of time. I uh, take them on these trips for a purpose. I take them back to the marae where they can rekindle their Māori spirit and uh, learn again the importance of the marae. We're coming into Wanganui now. We're going to visit uh, Putiki Marae, one of the most important marae's in the Aotea Kurahau Port District. Leslie is our host. She comes from this marae. This is one of her marae's. It is an important one, and it is one of the few places where you still see the old type of meeting house without any flooring. That doesn't mean to say that it is not a good meeting house. It's a better one than mine uh, with the floor in it. Uh, Leslie will direct us. We'll be here for about an hour. And then we'll find somewhere to have a bit of a chow, and then we'll wear away on the next stage. Okay? This visit to Putiki Marae is a brief stop. The club has stayed here before, and because of this, there will be no formal welcome on this occasion. Instead, uh, we have an informal greeting by some of the local elders present. One of the elders, the queer, Arangi Takarangi, lives on the marae. And she is a rangatira, a chieftainess, a noble woman. She is well known and well respected throughout the country. Over a hundred years old. <coughs> My father-in-law, <coughs> he died at the age of 64. This meeting house was up at the, uh, when he was a boy, <coughs> this meeting house was standing. There were three other. This is the third. The two others was in the midstream, was washed away by the flood. And then the next flood, this one came. And it was drifted from Matahiwi Pa, that's Ngati Pogdama tribe. Drifted from there and landed here. Landed as it is, but it's not as big. I'm glad it with all the kapahus and just came in the flood rest here. And when they heard, their father when they sighted it's here somewhere, and they knew who was living here, so they didn't bother to come and claim. They said, well, belong to him now, leave it here. Been here ever since? So that it wasn't built all at once? No, 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 not at all. This is according to what I was told. Now, inside, you have a look at it, no bora. No. I think you find that in all our old time countries, because of solid material they have. <laughs> but it's going, it's the, uh... <laughs> I'm not sure what will happen here, but I think we're going fairly close, fairly tight, and we'll try and cut it short, mainly because we are late, a little late, not all that badly. We're going to have the welcome, tangi, pofiri, speeches from them, replies from us, and I might call on one or two of you to help me on this one. They might have three or four speakers. Just short and sweet, to the point, and I suggest that you put on jackets because I think it's going to be fairly cold on this marae. The name of the marae is out there. And I think that pretty well sets it, okay? The arrival at the marae at Aotea, the high point of this trip. The group approaches silently onto the marae. And the queer, the elder women, sing out the invocations of welcome from the front of the meeting house. 
except where the visitors will sleep. The orations, the speeches are welcome. These are given by the elder men of the tribe, the chiefs. In their orations, they pay their respects to the dead. The Hongi is the Maori method of physical greeting and this must always be done when one is visiting a marae. The farewell hakari, the feast, it is an important occasion. It is the final opportunity for hosts and guests to thank one another before they part. their place on the marae as leaders and chiefs among their own tribes and will act out in the proper way the things that they learnt when they were members of the group. <laughs> <laughs> 